Hello, you are welcome to this brief presentation. In this short video, we are going to demonstrate how to set up a DSCP server using a Cisco router. And we go beyond setting up a DSCP server. We are also going to demonstrate how to perform a DSCP starvation attack, uh, which is a common um, DSCP exploitation that is found in today's network if your DSCP server is not properly configured. I'm using a Cisco router, but I've tested this demo on other vendors like a Sophos Firewall, the Sophos XG86. I've also done this in, in a WatchGuard Firewall, to be specific. That is a Firebox C15W. I've also tried this on a Microtik router, that is their router board RP951, and all of these attacks have been successful. So just to show you what I have in this Cisco router here, I have given the router an IP address, so we can do show IP interface brief, and then we exclude on sign. So you see the router is already given 50.1, and the status is up. All right, so let's also verify the DSCP configuration on this router. So I'm going to do show IP DSCP, or uh, let me actually sh show you all the commands that are required to set up a DSCP server. We are going to do a show run section DSCP and um, it shows us the commands that we use to set up a DSCP server in a Cisco device. So the commands are very straightforward. So we just do IP DSCP excluded address. Um, this is where you tell the server which addresses that the server shouldn't give out to devices on the network. So I don't want the server to give out 50.1 all the way to 50.5. And then you go ahead and create your DSCP pool. In this case, I name it my home network. Because this 1841 Cisco router is one of the devices I have here in my home network. And then we we'll specify the network segments that the server should give out IP from. So in this case, it's network of 192.168.50.0 slash 24 subnet mask. Default gateway, that's the um, default router here of course, my Cisco device 50.1. Um, I'm using Google DNS server 808. If you have a DNS server in your LAN network, you could also use the IP address. Um, so, you could set up a domain name and also the list time is eight days. Now, let's see if the DSCP server is already given out IP. So, if I do show IP DSCP binding, that takes me to this place where you can see that uh, 150, sorry, 192.168.50.7 is already given out to a device on the network with this MAC address. So forget about the dates here because I have not, I've not configured the correct time and date on this device. So you can see this IP was gotten from the server automatically. Now we can also do one more command to verify show IP DSCP pool and hit the enter key so you're going to see the pool the name of our pool is my home network and we have a total of 254 ip addresses only one has been given out okay so there's only one ip that has been given out and who or saw it um, earlier on uh, 50.7 has been given out to my pc on the network so you can see that the DSCP server is set up in this Cisco device and is pretty much working very well. And device is connected to this home network, request for IP address from the server. Server no doubt is going to allocate those IPs to those client devices. So I'm going to bring up my attacker machine. So in this demo, I'm using Kali Linux operating system and i'm also uh, able to reach the dcp server which is 50.1 from the kali point of view so the attacker machine is connected on the same network as dcp server Control c to stop this ping and it could access the dcp server 
All right, so now we are going to launch a tool called Yesenia. Already I've done that. So by going to the terminal and typing Yesenia um, dash G. So this is a very comprehensive tool that is used to perform internal pen testing or layer two attacks. So a couple of protocols here uh, could be hacked if they are not well configured on your network. Protocols like Cisco Discovery Protocol, CDP, and in this demo, we are going to focus on DSCP attack. But you could also do dot one q trunking attack and eight hundred two dot one x dynamic trunking protocol, HSRP, also Cisco proprietary protocol, which is host standby router protocol. There is also Cisco ISL that is inter switch link. There is MPLS. There is spanning tree protocol. There is VLAN trunking protocol, etc., etc. So it can do a comprehensive internal pen testing on a network using this tool. Um, in this demo, we are going to DSCP and we are going to launch a DSCP attack. The idea is to show you um, what is possible in your network if you do not put in place mechanisms to protect your DSCP server from attack like this. So this is a starvation attack where we are trying to exhaust the available IP addresses that the DSCP server is configured to give out. In our own case, we configure the server to give out from 192.168.50.6 all the way to 254. We exempted 50.1 all the way to 50.5. So I'm going to go to the left hand side here and click on having selected the particular protocol that I want to attack. Go to the left hand side and say click um, launch attack. So the type of attack, what I'll be doing here is sending this DSCP discovery message or discovery packet to the DSCP server, and then we'll be requesting for an IP address from the server, and Kali is going to continue requesting for an IP address using different MAC addresses, and by so doing, Kali is going to consume all the available addresses within the scope that the server is supposed to give out to legitimate users or clients on the network. So as we are sending this discover packet, we're also going to send a denial of service attack. I'm going to click on OK. And you can see that this is really uh, sending tons of packets to the DSCP server requesting for IP addresses. You can see over 11,000 packets already sent um, to the DSCP server. So if we go to list attacks here, you could see that DSCP attack is ongoing. So we are running attack. We could as well click on stop to stop this attack, but we are not stopping it anytime soon. So what we are going to do now is um, go back to the Terminal. All right, so the last time we did show IP DSCP pool, we saw that the only one IP address was given out, which is to my laptop by the DSCP server. So let us try to do that command again and see if further IP addresses have been given out. Okay, sure. So show IP DSCP pool is still showing us that list addresses are one out of the possible 250 addresses that are to be given out. So let's do show IP DSCP binding and it's still one IP address DSCP server has been able to give out to a device on the net. All right, so um, let us do show IP pool. Trying to get my mouse. Show IP pool. So you could see here um, the last time we did this command, the list addresses here was only one. Or now you could see that 108 addresses are been list out. Um, so it simply means that the Kali has been able to successfully uh, request several times for IP addresses from the DSCP server. And that request is going to continue until the scope of the addresses to be given out by the server is exhausted. So and see, yeah, so before now, the only addresses, or the only IP address that was given out by the server was 192.168.50.7. You could see that we have 50.100, 101.102.103 with different MAC addresses. So the Kali is going to be coming up with different MAC addresses requesting for IP from the server 
and if I could continue to scroll down, you see tons of addresses already given out. All of this IP are given out to the attacker machine because the attacker machine is simulating as different hosts using different MAC addresses to request for different IP addresses from the server. So if you look at the um, sorry, let me uh, get back to the attacker machine, which is the Kali. And we'll see that the attack is still ongoing. Now we have about 35,000 plus uh, packets uh, sent to the DSCP server. And uh, it will get to a stage where uh, we plug on uh, or plug in new devices on this network and they are going to end up getting the IPPA address 169.254.0.x, which simply means that the server is out of IP addresses to give out, and then that's going to cause issues for us on the network. So that is a simple DSCP starvation attack, and uh, we demonstrated this uh, using um, Cisco router. And this could also be done using any other vendors router. I've tried it with a couple of vendors. Show IP DSCP binding. All right. So um, the attack is kind of like subsided. So let me uh, try to stop the attack and start it again. All right. So you could see that the DSCP binding table has been populated once again and these addresses have been pulled out from the DCP server to my Kali Linux machine and the Kali is going to continue to request IP addresses from the DCP server using different MAC addresses and the server is going to continue to hand down IP addresses to this Kali machine until the scope or the IP addresses available within the DCP scope is exhausted. That is a simple attack on how to launch or exploit the IP addresses that are available within a scope or within your DSCP server space if you do not have the DSCP server protected from this kind of attack. As a matter of fact, if we go back to the Kali machine, I'm going to show you something. So if we go to that DSCP tab and go to launch attack again, we're going to see that apart from sending discover packet, which is what we're doing, you can actually go ahead and create a rogue DSCP server on the network where the server ID will be the IP address of our Kali machine. And then we'll put a starting uh, IP and then ending IP lease time could be 3600 seconds. Uh, renew lease could be the same thing, subnet mask. Router ID will be the default gateway, which in this case will be the IP address of our Kali. So the Kali becomes the router on the network, the default gateway, and then DNS could be 8.8.8.8 .8 or whatever DNS we have internally in your network. And this is very, very scary because this Kali machine becomes the default gateway on the network and client devices that want to get to the internet to browse will now pass through Kali and before getting to the internet. And that will allow the Kali machine to be able to perform a man in the middle attack. A sniffing packet from those client machines that are passing through it to get to the internet. So what can we do to protect our DSCP server? Two things we need to do is we need to have a switch that is capable of implementing DSCP snooping and dynamic app inspection. Unfortunately, if we are still using the end of life switches like 2960, Ceres, they do not have the capability to do DSCP snooping, except you are using 2960CX switch. But if you have migrated to the newer switch series from Cisco, like the 9000 series switches, like 9200 series, 9300 series, 9400 series, you will have the capability to configure the DSCP snooping on the switch, as well as dynamic app inspection. So these two mechanisms, so these two protocols, well, if they are well configured, um, will help you to stop the DSCP starvation attack, or even ending uh, the possibility of an attacker setting up his own DSCP server, which is a rogue server on your network, and begin to hand down IP to client devices, and in the process, performing 
a man in the middle at all. So this is the brief demo. I don't want this demo to be too uh, lengthy. And in our next tutorial regarding DSCP, we are going to show you how easy it is to set up DAI, that is Dynamic App Inspection, alongside DSCP Snooping. We'll be explaining those two technologies and also showing how to set them up so that you can protect your DSCP server from attack like this. I hope you have benefited from this tutorial and I hope to see you on another video.